Hello everyone and welcome to round 9 of the World Rapid Championship. It's uh, Alexander Zubov, Ukrainian Grandmaster versus Magnus Carlsen and uh, the, uh, last year they played in the World Rapid Championship. They faced in round 7 and uh, Zubov defeated Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Carlsen had the black pieces, he went for the Nimzo Indian and uh, Zubov was able to take him down. So here is uh, Carlsen's check, uh, chance to get his revenge uh, again with the black pieces. So let's see how the game went. Uh, uh, Zuba with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to f6 by Magnus, uh, knight to f3 now, and d5. Uh, we have c4, e6, uh, e3, and now a6. Uh, so uh, b3, preparing to fianchetto the dark square bishop, and Magnus goes for c5. Uh, we have bishop to b2, uh, fianchettoing the dark square bishop, c captures on d4, e captures, and just knight to, uh, knight to c6, continuing development. We have knight b to d2. Uh, and g6. Now, uh, Magnus also wants to uh, think to his dark square bishop to counter white's dark square bishop. We have bishop to d3 uh, and bishop to g7. Uh, queen e2, uh, and here both players just castle. And Magnus goes b6. He wants to think to the light square bishop as well. And now there is one game where rook a to c1, but here Zubov goes for rook a to d1, and it is as of uh, uh, move 12 that we have a completely new game. So Magnus continues with bishop to b7, uh, Fianchetto's the light square bishop, rook f to e1, and now uh, to free the, the light square bishop, d captures on c4. We have b captures on c4, strengthening the center, and here a very interesting move, uh, b5. As the a2 pawn is unguarded, here you can uh, trade off the pawns on the queen side because after captures, captures, and captures, there's also captures. So uh, grabbing back the pawn also with, with an attack on the bishop here. So instead, after b5, Zubov says, okay, I'm just going to create a pass pawn here. So he pushes c5. We have queen to c7, developing the queen, connecting rooks, and now uh, knight to e4. Uh, we have knight captures, bishop captures, and Magnus says, okay, let's uh, trade off the light square bishops as well. Knight to e7. Uh, we have bishop captures, queen captures, and here Dubov goes for, uh, not Dubov, sorry, Zubov goes for d5. Uh, point is that if pawn captures, then of course you lose the knight here. Uh, so, and uh, if bishop captures on b2, it's playable, uh, but there's the uh, the in between c6 attacking the queen, uh, queen to b6, now after the queen is captured. Uh, knight captures here and now knight e5 defending the past c, uh, c pawn. Also, there's the threat of knight to d7. So uh, white, white would definitely enjoy this. So Magnus goes for knight captures on d5 first, uh, but we will reach a, a very similar position. We have a bishop captures on, B7, on g7, king captures. We have queen to b2 check by Zubov, uh, king to g8, and now knight to e5. So uh, the knight, uh, the pawn is ready to be pushed to c6. We have rook f to d8 by Magnus, getting the rook to the op only open file on the board, uh, and then now c6. Uh, we have queen to c7, blocking the pawn, uh, and then now h4, preparing h5. Uh, Magnus defends it with h5, and then now rook to d4, being ready to, uh, uh, if g4 is played, and h captures to recapture with the rook and to bring the rook into the attack. Uh, Magnus doesn't want to allow this here. Magnus goes for knight to b6. He offers a rook trade, and here's a, a really good moment in the game. Uh, this is a, a very interesting position, and here uh, uh, Zubov played g4. He wants to bust open the position and start an attack against Carlsen's king. Uh, but there was a better move than g4. First, rook d to e4. Just uh, avoid the trade, avoid Carlsen to activate the other rook. Uh, and then now, after the rooks are nicely doubled on the e-file, next move you can play g4. You have ideas of even sacrificing the knight on g6. Uh, a lot of things become possible. Uh, but he, he rushed the attack uh, a bit too much with the g4, and uh, he allowed Carlsen to activate his, uh, uh, well, uh, to get rid of this rook with rook captures on d4, queen captures, and now he got the other rook uh, into the game for free. With queen to e4, and now uh, Carlsen spent some time uh, deciding whether knight captures on g6 is a danger or not, and in the end he decided it's not. He just played h captures on g4. And now Zubov has to decide whether he wants to recapture uh, with the queen. Uh, knight captures on g4 is great if uh, Magnus actually captures it. For example, check, queen blocks, queen captures on e6 with check. And you don't want to play this. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, white already has a passed c pawn. Uh, you, you just grabbed three pawns for the piece. You, you have a very easy way of getting your rook into the attack. So uh, only white can win this game. 
Uh, however, uh, the problem is after knight captures on g6, uh, you don't have to capture the knight. You just play something like knight d5, uh, and now the, uh, white doesn't have a way to, to continue this attack. You, you bring the knight back, f5 is coming. You, you, you defend your g4 pawn, and after the queen moves, queen to c2, uh, rook to c8, and it, it's, uh, well, it's a different game, of course. It, it is playable. Uh, but after h captures on g4, uh, Zubov continues with h5. It is the best way to continue the attack. And Magnus goes for the counter strike, g3. Uh, he asks, uh, what, what do you do now? And the best is to capture on g6. After h captures on g6, you have to go f6, kick away the knight. Knight goes back, uh, and now knight to d5, defending the f6 pawn. Queen captures on e6 with check, king g7, uh, and now... Uh, rook, to, rook to d1, g captures on f2, it's always playable, knight captures on f2, and again, the game continues. But this would have been uh, uh, the best course of action for Zubov after Carlsen's g3 maneuver. But Zubov was very low on time here. He first captured the pawn, and now he allows Carlsen this knight to c4 maneuver. Where if, if the knight is captured, then you have this in between queen captures and g3 with check. So again, it's best just to go for the g6 pawn, knight captures on e5, defending f7, with the knight, so queen captures on e5, here we would have a queen trade, captures, captures, and after uh, going after the c6 pawn, we, we would see captures, captures, and it's a, a, a rook endgame where uh, both players have three pawns, where black is uh, the slight favor due to the more active king. Uh, but after knight to c4, uh, Zubov captured the, the knight on c4, allowing this uh, queen captures on g3 idea, and uh, okay, we have a king to f1, uh, blocking and now B captures on C4. Zubov now captures on G6, but now uh, it is too late for such things. Here, Magnus goes Rook to D2. He threatens mate uh, uh, on F2. Uh, rook to D3 was even better, as Rook to F3 is somewhat of an unstoppable threat. Uh, but okay, it doesn't really change all that much because you can always go back. Uh, rook to d2, and now uh, we have captures uh, on f7 with check, king f8, and now rook to e2, the only good way to block this, uh, and now rook to d1, check by Magnus, we have rook to e1, and now feel free to pause the video here and try to find the best move for black, while I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on still paying attention after so many video uploads. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Rook to D3. And the, the threat of uh, Rook F3, check, the, there's nothing you can do about this. It, it's just too strong. Uh, however, after this Rook to E1, Magnus actually played Rook captures on E1 and he went into a Queen and Pawn endgame. But I guess that's just what happens when, you, when you're so confident in your endgame skills. We have Queen captures on E1. Queen to f3 check to, to pick up the c6 pawn, queen to f2 and now just captures. But uh, e even though uh, this is uh, 3 against 2, you've seen, uh, if not anywhere else on this channel, that uh, the queen and pawn endgames are, are so complicated and, uh, you know, a, a pawn up is never, almost never enough. Uh, but okay, Zubov queen to f6 uh, and now comes queen to e4. Uh, Carlsen's pawns are all nicely defended. We have king to g1. Queen to g4 check, king to h2, and now a5. He, he starts pushing his uh, pawns further. Uh, and here Zubov uh, decides to, to give up the f7 pawn for the da5 pawn. So queen to d8 check, king captures, and queen captures on a5 check. Uh, we have queen to e2 with check, uh, king to g3, and now queen e3 check. We have king to g4, and now c3. Carlsen continues pushing his pass pawn. Queen to c7 with check, king to g6, and now queen to c4. Uh, we have queen to e5, uh, and now comes a4. Zubov starts pushing his pass pawn as well. Uh, we have queen to f5 check, king to g3, and now uh, Magnus just played c2, and it was in this position that Alexander Zubov resigned the game, and Ma Magnus was able uh, in getting his revenge for, for last year's loss in round 7. Point is, whatever white plays, there are no checks, uh, well, no, no useful checks, uh, so whatever you play, you move the queen, you play a5, uh, you just play queen g5 check, and now the queen from g5 guards c1, whatever you play, king f2, now it's just another queen into the game, and, of course, two queens are always better than one, uh, you know, <laughs> most of the time. So, yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, with this win, Magnus joins the leaders. There are now four players uh, leading the tournament with uh, seven out of nine. 
uh, Magnus Carlsen, Van Gaal, who already faced Magnus Carlsen, they drew, they drew that uh, London system game, uh, Laquang Liam and the Maxime Vachel Lagrave. So next game, most likely, uh, well, most likely Magnus will face either Laquang Liam or Maxime Vachel Lagrave. Uh, so we can pretty much expect we'll be covering that. And as we've covered a lot of Carlsen's games today, uh, you know, I will be checking up on your hashtag suggestions uh, for what to show tomorrow before the start of round three. So, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it once again. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Simon Cervilla, uh, Gilles Schwerza, Julian Yusufzade, CBJ AMVs, uh, and Trevor Terrace for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the FIDE World, and Rap World Rapid and Blitz Championship. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.